In this video, I'm going to show you how to build AirSim with PX4 latest bits on Windows from scratch. So you may have found the GitHub repo already, and you may notice that there are releases with binaries, but let's suppose you want to have the very latest bits and not wait for the next release to come out, and you want to know how to do that from scratch. All right, well, let's give it a whirl. First thing you need to do is to clone the repo, and you can do that by requesting this URL, clone that someplace on your hard drive, go into that folder and you'll see AirSim here with a Visual Studio 2019 solution ready to go. There's even a build command here that will build it for you. So go ahead, type build. First thing this does is it downloads some dependent libraries including rpclib, which is pretty small, and it goes ahead and builds that. You have to have a developer command prompt for Visual Studio so it can find the Visual Studio compiler. This is also using CMake, you may notice. This RPC lib won't show up in the AirSim solution. It's a separate library. Next thing it does is it downloads the Unreal game asset for the automobile car that shows up when you use the car mode. And now it's building AirSim. Give that a few minutes to finish. Right, that's finished. You may have noticed it did some RoboCopy instructions at the end here. And what it's doing is it's creating a folder in here for Unreal, which is the Unreal plugin all laid out correctly for an Unreal plugin to work. And you'll notice that in the content, uh, there's the assets that uh, come with AirSim, which is a default drone and a car. And then in the source folder, you'll actually see um, that the Unreal library has binaries here, and these are the binaries that we just built. But this is all laid out ready for Unreal environments. So now you need an Unreal environment. All right, so I've already installed the Epic Unreal Engine, and as of this video, AirSim is using 4.25, so make sure you've installed the 4.25 Unreal Engine. And then the next thing you need is an environment. And uh, there's lots of different assets you can get from the marketplace on Unreal, but what I want is an environment because I'm too lazy to build my own. You can search for free content and so on. I've actually already downloaded one, which is the Modular Neighborhood Pack. And what I'm now going to do is copy those ASM bits over to this folder by basically doing this. I'm going to delete all the previous build information that's done here, and I'm going to copy the SM plugin folder over to this folder. So that's basically updating to the latest bits that I just built. And what this will do is it uses the Unreal project information to generate a Visual Studio solution, because what we're building here is an Unreal environment with C++. All right, that's done. And what you'll find now is that is a solution can load that in Visual Studio. And what we can see is that there's a plugins folder and there's an AirSim folder inside of that. And that's where all those binaries and source files show up as part of my Unreal game that I'm building. You want to set that as the startup project. Hit F5 and it will build and launch the Unreal game editor because I've selected the debug game with editor build configuration. While that's building, I'm going to set up my PX4 code base. And for that, I'm going to use the Windows subsystem for Linux version 2. And if you have that set up, you'll want to do everything in your home folder. I already have a git thing located here. And the reason for that is the home folder in WSL2 is vastly faster than uh, Windows mounted folders. So now I'm going to clone this directory here. The command line for building the software in the loop version of PX4 that runs on Linux with the Iris drone, but no uh, JMAV sims, no, no direct connection to a simulator. You can see while that PX4 is building that the Unreal editor has come up already. And you'll want to watch uh, this if it's compiling shaders, you get a little pop-up message saying it's compiling shaders, and you'll want that compilation process to finish. I can click play here, and AirSim is now up and running, saying it's waiting for TCP connection, and the drone is already in play. And let me show you what settings I'm using. So documents, AirSim settings, and I'm using a, selecting a PX4 vehicle. And I'm because I'm using WSL2, I have some special settings here for my IP addresses. So on Windows, 
WSL2 has a different IP address than my Windows host machine. So previously, PX4 and AOSIM would work fine on localhost, but in WSL2, that's not the case. So the Windows host is uh, this address here, and you have to use you have to set that to be the localhost IP. So localhost will not be able to reach WSL, but this address here on this adapter will. And then if I go over to the Linux side, in WSL2, the Ethernet adapter has this address here. All right, so this is uh, changes pretty frequently. And so you have to double check that and set it here. So AirSim is going to expect to be able to talk, send control, you know, flight control messages to this UDP port at that address. And it's expecting, and this is the local IP address that AirSim needs to use for that to work. So since I just changed the settings file, I'll need to stop AirSim and start it again. And that's all you need to do for that to work. Now I also need to point out that for PX4 to find AirSim, I needed to down here where I'm telling PX4 what the host address is that we want to talk to. And that, I remember that's the address of my Windows machine. So this will be picked up by PX4. You'll actually see it printed here. It's very important to check that it's using TCP and it's connecting to that Windows machine on this port. So that, that port has to match. One last tidbit. You may have noticed the firewall um, prompt dialog requesting access to get these messages through. But if you click the wrong button there and didn't enable it, you may need to go to advanced settings and change the inbound rules so that the port that PX4 is trying to enable is coming through. So the TCP port 4560 needs to be open so that the connection can come through from PX4 to the Windows machine. And now we can check the state of our build. And it actually finished already. Every time you stop and start AirSim, you need to stop with a control C and start again the local simulator. And now you can see, yay, WSL tool, WSL2 is connecting to AirSim. All right, and we got a home GPS location, which means we're now ready to fly. Now, remember that PX4 here is giving you actually a little command line console where you can run some different commands, and these are all the commands. One of them is commandus, and the commander can do things like that, but more importantly, the commander can actually do a PX4 assisted takeoff, and we'll see that happening right here. Now it didn't take off because the uh, altitude was already above the requested takeoff height. And that can happen uh, because the altitude sensing that's being simulated by AirSim has random noise in it on purpose because real uh, barometric pressure sensors don't have perfect numbers. So AirSim is simulating noise and is also drifting the altitude because the weather always changes. So let's try again. Oh, okay. Cool. So that worked. All right, so PX4 is working. You can take off and you can land, but what's more interesting is the Python code. I have a Conda environment set up already with the right version of message pack. There's some fun little Python scripts which use offboard flight control to fly the drone. Let's see if it works. All right, did a PX4 assisted takeoff, but now it's doing offboard flight control. So AirSim is now flying the drone. All right, uh, based on the instructions being passed through from Python. And uh, here you see a lovely bank turn happening here because it's doing a receding horizon type flight path, doing upward flight control, telling the drone to fly to certain positions. And the PX4 is doing some really nice uh, banking to try to honor the requests that are coming from AirSim as quickly as smoothly as possible. Now, of course, this Python script just has hard coded coordinates for this bounding box or this box that it just flew. So the real trick now is to use an artificial intelligence module that can take this video stream and fly the drone like this just from video. You can look at the Python script and the box that I'm talking about is here. So 
This is a Python API to call AirSim, to tell AirSim to move on this path. The path is described in coordinates, and these are the coordinates of that box. And that's the result that you get, which is, uh, you know, looking, I think, 12 meters ahead to do that sort of nice receding horizon type uh, flight path and telling it to always keep the drone pointing forwards. So there's no yaw on the drone there, but you could put yaw on the drone if you want and so on. And then the landing, which is simple. So that's it. It's working. And the next thing you can do to make it even better is you can package this project and set the build configuration to debug game, since that's the build configuration that we built, and tell it to pack Windows 64 bits. Then show the output log. You'll see these nice big steps come along here, and it's doing the full cooking. What this is doing is uh, turning all the game assets into a much more optimized and indexed data structure so that the um, compiled executable runs really fast, much faster than you'll see inside the Unreal Game Editor. So if I cancel that, close this, close that, into the one that I already did, what you get as, as a result is this exe. The cooked uh, assets are all in here, so you would have to zip both of those and the engine up if you wanted to distribute this game to other people. But watch how fast it launches. Of course, I'll have to open the network. And it comes up by default in full screen mode, which is, you know, that was super fast, right? Let's run it again. Pretty quick. Now, remember, for the connection to work, because I restarted AirSim, I have to restart PX4. And there you go, it's connecting already. It's now waiting for a good GPS. Looks like the GPS is good, so it sets a home location, and now we're ready to fly. Move that away, I can see what I'm doing. So now they have it software in the loop, WSL2, ASM, the whole thing from scratch.